Okay, this is a Dark Souls 1 PvP Shields tier list. Uh, this has been recommended several times. Um, I'm not really sure why people want to see this so badly, but uh, I'm going to make it for those people who do want to see it. Uh, hopefully you enjoy. Uh, you can see the tiers here. Exceptional Shields are for Shields that, um, you know, as the tier would suggest, have exceptional stats in one category or another uh, that puts them above other Shields of a similar type. Usable shields are shields you can absolutely use if you want to. Uh, there's some reason not to use them because there's something in exceptional that does what they do better, uh, but that doesn't mean you can't use them. <clears throat> Outclass shields are for shields that uh, share properties with other shields, um, but also have some difference in stat that uh, keeps them lesser than those other shields and then irrelevant is for shields that uh, are not worth using regardless of whether or not they have some special quality uh, there's just something that holds them back all right so let's get right into it this is the balder side shield the balder side shield has extremely high stability and 100 percent physical block rating uh, its elemental defenses aren't great but i would put this in usable it has a parry animation uh as mentioned, the stability is really high, so uh, that's nice. There's not too much to say about some of these shields, but uh, other ones, there's there's more to talk about. A lot of the great shields, this is the um, it's Iron Tarkus's shield, like the black great shield, something. But this isn't the tower shield, is it? No, this is the tower shield. Um, regardless, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the great shields are outclassed because there are a couple great shields that just do what the majority of great shields do better. Uh, this one goes into the outclass tier for that exact reason. Um, a lot of the great shields are very heavy. Some of them actually don't have that problem, though, and all of them lack a parry animation. This is the Black Knight shield. The Black Knight shield uh, is an exceptional shield for a couple of reasons. It has a very high stability. It has 100% physical block and uh, when fully upgraded, it has somewhere on the order of like 85 to 95% um, fire block. That's uh, not the most common situation to find yourself in, but m a lot of builds do run Pyromancy uh, just as a secondary attacking option. <clears throat> Usually dodging it is the way you would want to um, go about that, but the Black Knight shield has enough stability that it can actually block Black Flame. Uh, and because Black Flame is split physical and fire, uh, very little fire damage will actually make it through the shield. So that'll stop you from getting chipped too much. Uh, one thing that is a downside of the Black Knight shield is it doesn't have an exceptionally high magic block. So if you're up against a Moonlight Greatsword build uh, and you're low HP, and they switch to a... Um, a Moonlight Butterfly Horn, you're going to have to act pretty quickly because you can't block too many chips uh, with this shield. You'll you'll get chipped down through your shield fairly rapidly. This is the Blood Shield. The Blood Shield has uh, an exceptional quality in that it uh, increases your resistance to status effects more than any other shield. Um, so that's a that's a small benefit, but unfortunately the drawback of this it also has a hundred percent physical block, but uh, the drawback of this is that the stability is really low, and uh, in a shield, if you're going to be using it as a shield to actually block things, uh, stability is something you're really looking for. So I'm going to say that this is uh, it's it's somewhere between usable and outclassed. I'm going to say it's outclassed though because I don't think that the increase in status effect resistance really makes up for the lack of um, the lack of stability. This is the bone wheel shield. <clears throat> I think it's safe to say that the bone wheel shield is pretty much irrelevant. The bone wheel shield isn't a shield. The bone wheel shield is a weapon. Um, it's not a it's not an exceptional weapon either. Uh, it doesn't have a parry animation. It has a special spinning attack that can actually one-shot people given uh, the proper circumstances. If you go way back in my channel, you can find uh, me and Cerulean 1v1ing with uh, bone wheel shields. Um, 
fat roll, bone wheel shield, um, <laughs> what was the other condition? Uh, Calamity ring, 1v1s. Uh, but it's basically, it's a meme weapon. I'm going to say it's irrelevant as a shield, though, because I don't think I've ever seen someone use it as a shield itself. Its stability is not exceptional. It doesn't have 100% physical block. Um, the buckler... The buckler is somewhere between outclassed and irrelevant. <clears throat> I kind of want to put it in irrelevant just because uh, I don't think the parrying shields are very good regardless. So I'm, I'm going to do that, even though a lot of people do use it. But the stability is terrible. doesn't have 100% physical block. Um, elemental block is nothing to really write home about. Um, but it is an option, I guess, especially if you want that extra parrying window. Also, you'll note that the uh, parrying dagger and the dark hand aren't on this list. Uh, I'll talk about those briefly at the end. This is the Caduceus or Catechus Night Shield. Um, I guess it's usable. It has high stability, 100% physical block, nothing special about the... Um, the elemental blocks, but it's a it's a decent shield, I guess. Uh, this is the one of the two round shields. There are several round shields, actually. I guess. Oh, they're all um, they're categorized together. There is no other knight. Oh, here's the knight shield. What am I talking about? Those are both usable. They're just different designs of the same shield. Uh, this is the Caduceus round shield, I think. Um, I don't see the other round shield on here unless... No, it's not this. It's something else. Uh, I'd say this one's outclassed. Um, it's a small shield rather than a medium shield. doesn't have 100% physical block, but there's actually one non-100% physical block shield that pretty much outclasses the rest of them. Uh, and that's going to be, I think, towards the end. Yeah, I see it there. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to it, but there's not too much to say about this one. This is the... Abyss Great Shield. I've seen it used. Um, a lot of the Great Shields, again, as mentioned, are very heavy. Uh, this one also has, I think, better elemental resistances, although they both have pretty good elemental resistances. I wouldn't use either of them, personally. Um, but if I remember correctly, this one doesn't have 100% physical block. So that's something. This is the... Cracked Round Shield. The Cracked Round Shield is not as bad as you might think, but it's still going to be an irrelevant. Um, it has not 100% physical block, it has low stability, and the other thing about the uh, Cracked Round Shield that's worth mentioning is that it has a high, um, a high magical block. But there are better options for magical block, and the stability is not very good, and also not having 100% physical block makes it just not really a, a great shield at all. This is the Crest Shield. The Crest Shield uh, has high magical block, somewhere in the 80 to 90% range. Um, so it's probably the best for blocking pure magical attacks. When it comes to spells, you usually don't want to block them, um, but with the Moonlight Greatsword and the Moonlight Butterfly Horn, if you really wanted to block them, this is the way to go, generally speaking. Um, also, the stability is not excellent. That's uh, the reason that I think this one, the Dragon Crest Shield, is going to go into Outclassed. Uh, I think the Black Knight Shield is pretty much just better. Unless you have a build that really doesn't want 16 strength for some reason or can't handle the extra weight of the Black Knight Shield, there's almost no reason to use this one. The Black Knight Shield is just, uh, you know, does what it does, but better, and you have more stability. But both of these shields are for blocking their specific type of damage. You just wouldn't really want to do that anyway. This is the Eagle Shield. Uh, this is probably the best Great Shield. Um, it doesn't have 100% physical block. But it has one um, one quality that's uh, exceptional compared to all the other great shields, which is its weight. The weight of the eagle shield is far less than any of the other great shields, uh, and giving up 100% physical block is actually worth it, generally speaking, in that instance. The stability is still really high. Um, so yeah. This is the East-West Shield. This has a really high uh, stability as well, but also not 100% physical block. 
uh, decent, usable, not much more to say about it. This is the Effigy Shield. I kind of want to put this in Irrelevant, but I'm going <sighs> to... This is actually kind of a tough one. Uh, I'm going to put it in Outclassed, because it has... It doesn't have 100% physical block, if I remember correctly, and it's like the uh, the Crest Shield line, the Crest Shield and the Dragon Crest Shield, in that it blocks a specific elemental type. But its specific elemental type is lightning, and the only lightning effect that isn't split damage is like lightning spear. So I guess you could use it to block a demon spear, but then you're letting some of the physical damage through. Or you could use it to block a lightning split damage weapon, but the stability isn't really excellent there. And a lot of the split damage weapons, like, I don't know why you would ever use, like, a lightning katana or, like, a lightning uh, anything that isn't a heavy weapon, really. Because, because of the way that uh, damage calculations work, it tends to be better to use um, split damage on larger weapons. Uh, and so the stability will hold you back in that instance. This is the Gargoyle Shield. Um, this is similar to the Blood Shield, but it has a couple of things going for it that are actually better than the Blood Shield, and a couple of things that are a little bit worse. So it doesn't have 100% physical block. It does increase your resistance to status, uh, and I think it's a little bit heavier than the Blood Shield, but I'm, if I remember correctly, it has a significantly higher stability. I'm struggling as to whether to put this into usable or outclassed because still resistance to status is not the most useful thing in the entire world. Um, but if for whatever reason you were really concerned about that, then you would choose one of these two shields, and I would say that the blood shield just has too low of a stability uh, to be really usable. At least for me. I, I don't particularly care for it. I have used it on a couple of builds, and I've found that I would rather be using something else. Uh, this is the Giant Shield. The Giant Shield is a very heavy Great Shield. Um, again, as mentioned, most of the Great Shields are going to go into Outclassed, um, and the reason for that is pretty much strictly because of their weight. Um, you could argue that it's usable. It is technically usable. I wouldn't use it, uh, because if you're... You don't have that much wait to just throw into random crap like unless you're wearing both a ring of favor and a havel's ring uh if you want you know decently heavy armor like a, a decent amount of poise and a great shield you're running the risk of fat rolling depending on your weapon choice so realistically you would probably i mean a lot of people uh stick to fast roll regardless uh, but if you're okay with mid-rolling, then you can use some of these shields. But if you're going to be mid-rolling, you probably want a shield that can parry. Uh, because otherwise, once someone gets up in your face, uh, you don't have many options that are like threatening. Parrying isn't super consistent, but at least it's another thing that people have to be aware of, as opposed to just like a shield bash, which isn't really going to do anything and probably will never even be input. <laughs> so, you know. This is the Grass Crest Shield. Uh, the Grass Crest Shield is <sighs> usable, I guess. Uh, the Grass Crest Shield is much more useful in invasions than it is in duels because the uh, stamina regen effect is helpful, but the stability of the shield is not excellent. The physical block isn't 100%, and uh, Pretty much everyone uses green blossoms anyway, and that gives you a lot of stamina regen. Usually you're less worried about your stamina regenerating and more worried about running out of stamina. Uh, and because of the delay in between um, like bursts of stamina regen, I guess it could be nice to have that little bit of extra in between, but usually you're going to exhaust your stamina bar and then have to wait for it to fill up. Um, and the Green Blossom does a pretty good job of handling that situation. Uh, this is the Great Shield of Artorias. I guess this one's usable. Um, the Great Shields are really hard to rank, because I think the Eagle Shield is just so much better than every other Great Shield. And then the 
uh, Havel's shield is just an exceptional shield, but is like has so many drawbacks that it's hard to even um, hard to even rank it. But the Great Shield of Artorias has decent elemental blocks, 100% physical block. It's pretty heavy, but it's not as heavy as some of the other options. I wouldn't use it because I don't like Great Shields, but if you want to use a Great Shield, you could do worse. This is the Havel Shield. I think the Havel Shield is outclassed. I think the Havel Shield is actually outclassed all by itself because it's the heaviest Great Shield, uh, and it's just way too heavy. It also has a pretty insane strength requirement. Um, I I don't know exactly what it is. Let me look this up. But uh, it has 100% uh, physical block, high elemental blocks, um, and just... Other than that, the, oh, the stability is the best stability of a shield in the game, as far as I'm aware. Unless maybe an upgraded shield outclasses it, but I don't know. Right, here's the, so the requirements. Uh, 50 strength. That's what I suspected. That's what I thought it was, but uh, I wasn't certain, so I decided to look it up just to make sure. 50 strength to one, sh one hand the shield. Uh, that's too much stat investment. I would push this down to irrelevant. If it wasn't for the fact that, uh, ah, you know what? It's irrelevant. It's a meme. It's, uh, you know, it's too heavy. The stat investment is too high. The stats are insane, but all that other stuff just holds it back too much. Just too much. Uh, this is the heater shield. The heater shield's all right, but the heater shield is pretty much outclassed. Uh, the stability is pretty good. Um, 100% physical block. Um, pretty low elemental blocks, all things considered, but they're just better medium shields. Same with the Hollow Knight shield. Hollow Knight shield also has very high stability, but it's just outclassed. This is the Iron Round shield. Um, the Iron Round shield is Shiva's shield, and it's actually better than you'd think it is, given how much it gets used. I don't see people using the Iron Round Shield very often, but it's actually pretty solid. I guess it's a little too heavy is probably what that, um, where the issue lies on that one. This is the Knight Shield. Um, I've seen it maybe once or twice. I don't like the way it looks, because even though by itself it looks pretty nice, it doesn't fit into builds very well, and it actually doesn't really fit into the game of Dark Souls pretty much at all. You can look at all these, and they're like muted colors, grays and, and browns, and uh, then you've got this, which is just like a vibrant red and a vibrant blue with a green crest in the middle, except I think in game the crest is actually golden. But regardless, it's usable, I guess. I wouldn't use it. 100% um, physical block, decent stability. Nobody uses it for some reason. I don't know. Probably outclassed, actually, but whatever. This is the leather shield. Uh, so the medium leather shield and the leather shield both go into outclassed because there's just a better uh, alternative to pretty much both of them. Neither of them have 100% physical block. Neither of them have uh, very exceptional stability, but they do have decent stability. Um, they're not used, though, for basically one reason, I think. This is the Plank Shield. Plank Shield's irrelevant. Plank Shield's um, pretty much a joke. I think if you, like, Lightning Infuse it or something, it has a really high Lightning block, but that's so niche. And also the physical block's not very high, so I would go with a no on that one. <clears throat> this is the Red and White Round Shield. Uh, that's irrelevant. Also probably a pretty high magical block, but again, nobody uses it for whatever reason. Also, blocking magic is not really that helpful. Uh, this is the Sanctus. This is probably the most um, self-defeating shield uh, next to Havel's Great Shield. because the So they both have um, something unique about them, Havel's Shield being the stability and the, uh, the coverage. It blocks a lot of elemental damage really well. Uh, and then the Sanctus has a regen effect that regenerates your HP over time. Uh, the regeneration of the Sanctus is really, really low. And also, uh, it doesn't have 100% physical block, and the stability isn't great. So if it had 100% physical block, the regen would be a little more impactful. But because it doesn't block 100% of physical damage, uh, the regen doesn't actually even really pay for itself. So it's not 
useful. <laughs> uh, it's just not really worth running. I mean, maybe if you're running a, a regen stacked build, you might want to tack this on, but you're probably better with just the replenishment miracle and, you know, moving on with your life. This is the Silver Knight shield. Um, personally, I would say the shield is probably maybe exceptional, but it's actually... I'm going to put it here because, uh, one, because of popular opinion, and two, because that's not really a founded opinion. It's mostly just, um, I don't know, some shit that I say. But basically, um, it has higher magic block than the Black Knight shield with lower fire block. I think it has higher stability and 100% physical block. Um... Other than that, there's not really much to say about it. I thought I was going to have more to say about the Silver Knight Shield, <clears throat> but uh, obviously not. It's definitely usable, though. This is the Small Leather Shield. Um, so, kind of weird to see this shield uh, in the top tier, uh, but mostly it's in the top tier for two reasons. One is its usage, and the second one is obviously its stats. So, uh, this shield made it onto like everybody's builds uh, eventually because it has similar stats to the dark hand in terms of weight uh, but it has superior stability it has um, decent ish physical block uh, the physical block is higher than uh, the dark hand I believe when it's fully upgraded and uh, it's actually fairly decent. You do get chipped quite a bit, but it's not it's not that bad. Uh, and mostly, the, the biggest draw of this shield is that it only weighs like half a unit, which means that pretty much any build uh, has access to a shield with only minor considerations for weight, and also no stat requirement, pretty much. Um, and in fact, I think no stat requirement at all, as far as the uh, base classes of the game are concerned, because it's actually the starting shield of the Sorcerer class, and I don't think there's a class in the game that has a lower starting uh, strength and dexterity than the Sorcerer. Um, really common shield, though. Uh, it's very decent. Half a unit is an excellent, uh, an excellent amount of weight. And in fact, both two of the three shields that are in the exceptional tier are there because they're so light. They're the lightest. Um, the lightest <clears throat> in their shield class. Um, this is the spider shield. The spider shield has one unique quality, which is that uh, it outright blocks status. So unlike the gargoyle shield and the blood shield, which increase your resistance to status by changing your stats effectively, uh, the spider shield, if an attack that would inflict status hits the shield, it instead doesn't inflict that status. It also has 100% physical block, <clears throat> and the stability is, all things considered, decent. Um, I wouldn't really use it personally, because again, status isn't something you have to worry about that much. Um, but if someone's spamming into your shield, it might be an option. <clears throat> but again, this, the stability probably won't be able to keep up. I wouldn't personally use it, but it has a, a situation that you might want to use it. This is a stone great shield. Uh, I believe it has an exceptionally high magic block rate, uh, but it's also very heavy, similar to the other great shields. Um, and again, you don't really want to be blocking magic that much. That's not really a, a huge concern for a lot of people, uh, especially since the DLC where, I mean, maybe you could block a Dark Bead, but you're probably not going to be blocking multiple Dark Beads unless you're uh, running a Havel Shield. So, And even then, it's split damage, so the magic portion that gets through the shield isn't something you need to worry about too much. This is the Sunlight Shield. Um, I guess it's usable. The stability is pretty high. 100% um, physical block. Not too, too heavy, but... I don't know. I wouldn't personally use it. This is the target shield. The only reason I'm not putting it in irrelevant is because the buckler is already in irrelevant and they don't really belong in the same tier. Uh, it is the only shield 
that uh, well it's not the only shield it's the, it's the only shield that isn't completely terrible that um, has the improved parry animation uh, that has longer parry frames but it also has a longer recovery time so you're usually just better off with a with a small leather shield uh, for attempting to parry anyway because it's so easy to punish uh, a whiffed parry attempt with the target shield that uh, you don't really want to be using it unless you're going to be, you know, hitting your parries. And you, if you're going to be hitting your parries anyway, then you might as well be using a shield with a smaller parry window. I think. I don't know. Personal opinion. But I've never seen them perform very well. This is the tower shield. Um, the tower shield is probably usable. And in fact, I'm going to move this up here. Because I guess that's usable too. And I'm going to move the terror shield down. Um, heavy, great shield, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you've heard it all before. This is one of the round shields. Um, I'm going to put this into outclassed, I guess. I'll put this into usable. I know I'm shifting it around a lot towards the end, but... It's kind of hard to rank the shields because there are three that are really strong and then the rest of them kind of fall into a similar category of like, oh, I want to use the Balder Knight shield. Well, or the Balder shield. Well, why not use the Black Knight shield? You know, it's like, oh, I don't have 16 strength investment. Okay, then use the Balder shield. But you're not going to be able to block fire attacks as well. I don't know. This is the um, wooden shield. Uh, this is either usable or outclass. It's not terrible. Blah, 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 blah. You've heard it all before. Not 100% physical block. Um, actually, surprisingly decent stability. Uh, but I think the east-west shield is pretty much just a superior wooden shield. Um, but you can totally use it. I mean, e even things in outclassed are usable, technically speaking. And the things in irrelevant are mostly things that have some niche. Like, the bone wheel shield is a weapon, not a shield. The Havel's Great Shield is for <laughs> two-handing and standing in a corner. I mean, they they all have their their situational usefulness, but uh, you know, if you're if you're actually seriously fighting someone and you don't have an intention of just um, fucking running away or trying to pull some bullshit, then uh, these are the shields that you really want to look at, and these are shields that are also uh, you know an option. A couple of honorable mentions for uh, being. You know, more trash than the other shields. So trash, in fact, that they didn't even make it onto the shield tier list. Uh, the Dark Hand. The Dark Hand uh, has interesting elemental coverage with like 80% block in every category of element uh, and physical. Uh, but and also a very a very lightweight of uh, 0.5. But it's outclassed by the uh, small leather shield because of its stability. Uh, the Dark Hand stability is really, really low. If it wasn't so low, it would actually be, you know, usable and probably make its way onto this tier list, but unfortunately, no. Uh, and then the Parrying Dagger. The Parrying Dagger isn't technically a shield, but it is an offhand. Uh, if you're going to use the Parrying Dagger, you're probably better off just using an offhand weapon. Uh, the attack of the Parrying Dagger is almost never going to be useful. Uh, it does have its uh, situation, though, in that it's very fast, so you might be able to use it to cancel a backstab or something. Um, but otherwise, it has a, a long recovery time, similar to the target shield and the buckler. So you're probably better off with, like, a, an S-Doc or a Katana or a Bare Fist um, or any of the light shields. So, yeah. Uh, again, I'm not sure why people wanted this tier list so badly, but if you, <laughs> you know, if you come up with something else... Uh, I'd be happy to make it for you. As long as it's something that I can reasonably do, um, just let me know, and uh, I'll make more of these, I guess. Um, anyway, have a wonderful day. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, blah, 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 blah.